Now, without further delay, I'd like to turn today's call over to your first speaker, Chuck Tomasi. Chuck, you have the floor. Thank you. Welcome to TechNow, the web series for ServiceNow administrators and developers on a variety of Now platform topics. It is my pleasure to be here. My name is Chuck Tomasi. Let me get that slide up. I'm a little behind. My name is Chuck Tomasi. I am a senior TPMM at ServiceNow. I've been here for a really long time. I think I had my sysadmin course about 10 years ago this month and uh, was a customer for a couple of years before coming to ServiceNow and doing implementations and pre-sales and a lot of other roles. So I am really happy to be here. Thrilled that you are available to, to see this. So, uh, TechNow is coming up on about six years of of content. So if you don't see something or you want to know if we covered it, we've got a link at the end of the show that can help you drill it and find that. So I want to make the introduction quick because we have some wonderful, wonderful content. So I'm going to turn it over to Craig Stepp for his introduction. And yes, that's me right there, my beautiful semi-smiling face. Uh, I'm a senior curriculum developer uh, in the training and certifications, and I specialize in specializing cloud automation. Uh, previously, I did orchestration and the professional services here at ServiceNow. And I've been here almost five years. I'm working on it. So uh, I've been a TechNow host since 2016. And of course, I love Linux, podcasting, and photography, not necessarily in the order that I just laid them out there. So, and now on to Stacy. Craig, I think we can call that a Mona Lisa smile on your intro. <laughs> is that what that is? That's okay. <laughs> that, that's it. You nailed it. It's a classic. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Stacey Bailey. I'm a principal curriculum developer with ServiceNow, focusing on platform training. I've been in IT for quite a while with ServiceNow. Uh, like Chuck, I joined first as a customer, uh, running a very, well, not very large by today's standards, um, but I was a customer for several years, partner after that, employee since 2014. So. Um, my big obsession right now, just got a gaming PC and an Oculus Rift. So that's, that's my current mm. obsession. <laughs> I'm coming to your house. Yep. The laser engraver is a thing of the past. <laughs> it lasted a month. That's like the kids. Yeah. It's out with the old toys and with the on. new. <laughs> yep. Got to keep the pace. Speaking of moving on, our agenda today is we are going to be covering a quick tip which we are often inspired by the community, but we get our inspiration from elsewhere as well. And uh, we're going to be talking about delegated development, excuse me, just delegation. I, I, it just rolls off the tongue after a while. I've been talking about delegated development. That is not what we're going to be talking about. Craig will be introducing you to delegation in the platform. And then Stacey's going to incorporate that topic into her main topic as we talk about virtual agent. If you have a question, please post it to the Q&A area and we will do our best to answer it. If we don't get to all of them by the end of the show, we will be posting them back to the community with information. So you can go to community.servicenow.com and find this episode. Again, we'll have a link to all of the episodes so you can find it very, very easily. I also want to remind you that Knowledge 19, it seems like it's a long way off. It is not, especially for those of us who have to prepare for this. Uh, call for speakers just went out last night. I, I wish I had a link on here. You're going to have to take this one verbally, or we can answer it in the Q&A. If you are interested in speaking at Knowledge, go to knowledge.servicenow.com and submit your idea and abstract and uh, start planning for this. Get your, talk to your boss. The, the value is terrific. We've got lots and lots of hands-on labs. I believe something like 80% of the, the customer, or excuse me, the sessions are led by customers. So we want your content. This isn't just ServiceNow people getting up in front of you and telling you what's new and cool and great and how to use this feature. It's an awesome networking session. I encourage you, if you do go with a team of people from your organization, Sit at different tables. Introduce yourself to new people and say, hey, what are you working on? And, and get to know those people. They will be part of your extended network, and you'll be able to keep in touch with them and learn, and they'll learn from you. And that's just the way the great value from these conferences, not just from the content you get, not just from the hands-on workshops, but the networking opportunities are outstanding. So I encourage you. It's May 5th through 9th in Las Vegas, Nevada again. So uh, again, talk to your boss. There's information on the site. 
uh, reach out to one of us if you need some some uh, help in in finding a way to go to knowledge. If you've been to knowledge before, even better. You know what the value is. Talk to somebody who's interested in going or say, hey, maybe I'm I'm thinking about this. It's not too soon to have that discussion. If you are a customer, which I suspect many of you are, I encourage you to go to the Customer Success Center at servicenow.com slash success. Wherever you are on your customer journey, whether you are brand new wondering, how am I going to effectively implement a CMDB, or should I configure, should I customize this piece, that piece, uh, how do I do upgrades to the next release? If you've been around for 10 or more years, you know there are lots of legacy things that uh, you may have questions for. This is the central repository for that sort of information. Best practices, implementation, Q&A, frequently asked questions. It's on the Customer Success Center, and we are constantly updating this, constantly putting new content there for you to consume. So check back and check back often so that you can uh, get that information and get engaged with your account team if you've got questions beyond what's on there. Hey, I've got a question about this particular white paper that I got from the Customer Success Center. Let's have a discussion around that. I'm planning on implementing this, that, and the other thing, and maybe I want to extend into that way. Custom applications, you name it, it's a great place to go for that. I'm now going to turn it back over to Craig, and he's going to talk about our quick tip of the month. Yes. So, so the quick tip uh, today, we're going to talk about delegating approvals and tasks and other uh, maybe some other mundane tasks that you will handle day to day over to somebody else while maybe you're out on PTO. So did you know that ServiceNow actually can do that? So I'm going to see if you are aware of the delegation capability in ServiceNow. So you can vote uh, as far as I know, yes or no, and let us know uh, that uh, – uh, if you knew this was here or not. And uh, so, Chuck, have you used the delegation before? I did when I was a customer. We we used it, although it didn't get a whole lot of wide adoption, and that was probably because we didn't socialize it. We had a million other things to do at the same time. So I knew it was there, and it, it's one mm -hmm. of those underutilized but been around for a long time features. People they seem to latch onto it and use it, or – they, they see it and forget about it, or maybe we're not showing anybody anymore, but this is the chance to get that. Yeah, and it looks like about 71%, 71.5% uh, know about it, and the other 28 and a half do not, so, which is which is good. So I'm glad you're, uh, you're looking at this today. So also before I go into the, the, um, the slide, I want to tell you that it's not necessarily – visible by default. So if you're an admin of your ServiceNow instance, you can add related lists to the user profile on the self the self service user profile. You can add that to uh, the bottom so they can add their own uh, delegation records. I don't know that everybody wants that, but I think it comes in handy. So delegating approvals uh, is great. Like I said, if you're on PTO and you need somebody to take over your approvals or even get your notifications that you normally would get out of the system while you're out. Uh, you can do that. So again, if the list isn't available, uh, the delegation list, as you can, uh, as a related list at the bottom of your user profile, you can add that easy enough. Uh, and, you know, for each person that you add, you can select the default time it starts. You have to select a co-star uh, an active user. You can select when it starts and when it ends and what kind of things that they're going to take care of. Maybe it's approvals or assignments. And maybe somebody else would do your CC notifications and meeting invitations. You know, you can kind of mix and match there. And of course, there's a couple of caveats. One, make sure they're an active user. Two, make sure that uh, they're not going to be delegating also because that would be a problem. And delegates delegation does not cascade. So if it goes to a user that's also delegating, it won't go that far. It only goes to the, the next person in the line. So all you have to do is just go to that related list, click new, and add a delegate, and that's it. That's pretty much it, uh, all there is to it. Um, so y'all got any questions or anything so far? No, nope, just getting to the Q&A, not, not around delegation at this point. 
Uh, wait okay. a minute. So we do pretty... have one that just came in. Uh, if you're on PTO, what is PTO? You used an acronym. Oh. Shame on you. <laughs> Paid time off, or or maybe you're you're off you're you're out of the office for any particular reason, uh, especially for extended period of time. You want somebody else to take those things. That's what PTO stands for. Thank you. That was an easy one. <laughs> so now uh, I think I will turn it over to Stacy for our topic du jour. All right. So going from conversation to resolution with virtual agent. Before we get into the meat, again, we've got another polling question here. In your organization, do you have high frequency, low value, repetitive requests that take up your agent's time? I'll give everybody a few minutes to uh, respond to this. What would you sure. say is, is an example of that? What, what, what's a good example of high volume, low, uh, <laughs> low value? Well, any, any you know, I don't, thoughts off I don't the top know of your that head? necessarily be uh, low value, but high frequency. Checking on uh, where your enhancement request stands or ordering yeah. something from the service catalog. Yeah, I was I was thinking those common things you're looking for, uh, like from HR. Hey, what's the holiday calendar for Canada next month uh, or next year? Right. I'm, I I don't live in Canada. It's something that I wonder about every quarter or so when I have to schedule an appointment, but I want that information. And I don't remember where it is buried in some website, and I'm certainly not going to wait for somebody to respond to an email, because that's, that's not their favorite thing to do. You know, we didn't hire high-paid HR people to answer calendar questions. So this would, right. this would be a good example of something that I want an automated assistant to be able to help me with. Sure. Yep. And it looks like 95% uh, of our audience agrees. <laughs> Overwhelmingly. Yes, I, wow. I think have we have a use that, case. I think we call that demand. <laughs> uh, and demand that our product management team uh, has heard loud and clear and has introduced uh, the ServiceNow virtual agent to uh, begin addressing that need. So um, with virtual agent, uh, again, this is essentially a chatbot technology that was introduced in the London release to help users get assistance with common issues, complete common low complexity tasks, or check the status of things. Uh, one of the really nice things about virtual agents is that they never get tired, so you don't have to wait till someone's in the office or wait till they get to you. Um, they can respond immediately, freeing up all of your overworked agents so that they can uh, concentrate on tasks and queries that require kind of higher brain activity uh, to respond to. Um, the other thing about virtual agent is that it, it operates deep within the ServiceNow platform. So it's aware of who it's chatting with and has access to all the information about that user um, immediately. We don't have to re-ask a lot of questions as long as ServiceNow has that data in there. So we can uh, develop conversational workflows or use pre-built conversations that are packaged with ITSM, CSM, or HR. Uh, in this example that we see here, uh, there's a user that needs some computer support. Because we know the assets assigned to that user, the virtual agent it can say, which of your computers assigned to you uh, is having the problem. So the virtual agent is aware of the user and the user's context. So it, it becomes very efficient. Um, also, it is kind of integrated with multiple interfaces, like the service portal or default view, and integrated um, without any kind of code necessary with third-party messaging apps that are used in a lot of environments like Slack or Microsoft Teams. Um, the London release is the first uh, production release of this, so we look forward to this application maturing and evolving uh, in Madrid and beyond. Currently with the London release, Virtual Agent is available only with the subscription bundle shown here for ITSM, CSM, HRSM. And on the right here, you can see that there are several pre-built conversations for those common low-complexity tasks. Uh, related to these things. 
From a licensing perspective, right now we understand uh, that you can use the pre-built conversations if you subscribe with one of these bundles or create um, conversations that relate to the particular subscription bundles. If you're looking to do some conversations that aren't related, uh, I think, Chuck, the best bet is probably to talk to your sales rep and make sure that, that you're in compliance with licensing. To run Virtual Agent, again, you need to be running a London version of ServiceNow. Uh, we have London versions of ServiceNow available on the uh, developer portal at developer.servicenow.com. To access Virtual Agent, you either need admin or Virtual Agent admin, and then there are a couple of plugins. Glide Virtual Agent is the main plugin that enables uh, Virtual Agent technology. Uh, this can be requested under Manage Instance on your personal developer instance. And then optionally, you can enable those conversations that we just saw on the previous screen around ITSM, HR, or CSM. And those conversations, by the way, are great to reverse engineer some pretty sophisticated conversations and learn about how to use a virtual agent. Now, I've always been a fan of this uh, delegate capability. If I'm going to be out, I want someone to be able to cover for me. So we're going to take what Craig just showed you about nominating a delegate and put a, a virtual agent front end on that. We're going to keep it pretty simple since we're uh, isolated to just an hour here. We're going to start by welcoming the user by name. Again, virtual agent knows who it's talking to. We'll select a delegate, start and end date end times, what options, then we're going to generate that delegate record, give the user a link to it, let them know that they're all set. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, before we get into that, just kind of previewing what we will take a look at in the demo, we're going to take just a second to look at branding uh, the virtual agent, look at the interface, build out our topic, testing it at each step along the way. We'll publish it, interact with it, and then expose it in the service portal and test it, and add it to Slack and test it out. So let's get going with that. I'm going to enable the screen sharing right now. And let me know, um, Craig or Chuck, when you can see my screen. Got it. I can see it. All right, excellent. We are using our navigation here so that you can see collaboration. This is where Virtual Agent lives. We can see a live agent setup. One of the features of Virtual Agent is that if it decides that it can't help you or something goes wrong, it can immediately transfer you over to a live agent. That's a little bit beyond our scope today, um, but just know that that's there. We've also got the branding set up and access to our virtual agent designer. So let's begin with our branding setup here. That opens up a properties page, and we can see that we can change the logo, the chat header, uh, and I've actually already customized this for TechNow demo support, color schemes, etc., as well as our contact information. So this is very important for every customer to customize this uh, before they start using virtual agent. Uh, just comes with some demo data in there. Uh, for today, we're going to have a trusted advisor here. Uh, we're going to personalize our bot user profile. We were initially going to go with a trusted advisor um, that we've all known and loved over the years. Um, but I know that this is going to date the webinar, Chuck. But I think we're I love it. going to have so, to have a moment of reverence. Hold it audible on this one. Yep. <laughs> uh, we're going to have Stan Lee Bot. May he rest in peace. So Stan's going to be our virtual agent uploaded in the cloud now. All right. So. So that hopefully gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can do uh, with the branding. This to me was a little bit surprising that we have a different bot user profile setting versus the logo that we use in chat. But now let's jump into the designer. 
the first time that you go into Designer under Collaboration Virtual Agent Designer, uh, you may have a pop-up that you need to allow. This pops up in a new browser window, similar to Studio and, and some other things. I've got the optional plugin for the ITSM conversations enabled right now. And you can take a look at any of those, see the conditions, uh, keywords that they uh, key off of, view them, publish them, or duplicate them to tailor them for your organization. So that's, that's something definitely to uh, take a look at. But in the interest of time, let's start on nominating our delegate. Uh, we'll begin by creating a new topic. This is a conversation. And we'll call it, of course, nominate a delegate. Um, in this first version of Virtual Agent, uh, we are driven off of keywords. So we'll use that acronym PTO, which we now know means paid time off, out of That's office, right. vacation, holiday. We can add as many keywords uh, as we want. This helps the engine kind of determine your intent. As you know, though, we also purchased a company called Parlo, which adds a little bit more intelligence. Uh, so we should probably look at that later on down the road. Save our topic. And then once it's saved, then we can edit our topic flow. OK. So now we are in the Virtual Agent Designer interface. There are three main areas of this. Along the left, we've got our palette. We can see that the controls that we can use are divided into asking for user input, having our bot respond, and utility tasks. So we should probably look for this library to grow with each and every release. Uh, down here on the left, we've got script variables. I think of these as being very analogous to workflow scratch pad variables. So just we can set the value, use these throughout the conversation. Main part, we've got our canvas. And depending on what node we have selected in the canvas, we'll have the appropriate properties for that node show up along the right. So here, again, first thing we want to do is welcome the user by name. So we're going to say, hello, let's set up a delegate to cover for you while you are out. But let's, we know the user. And this is a very important uh, notation here. Uh, there's a double brace user notation. This is actually the glide object for the user. So we can dot walk that and use any uh, field that's on the user table. So we could say, hello, user dot first name. Let's try that out. Uh, we want to definitely try this out every step along the way. And there's our little Stanley bot. And we could see hello, and it pulled in my first name. So that's all we've got right now, but it's a start. Okay. I'm reading it in his voice, thing, by the way. We, we should do robot voice, right? <laughs> Text to speech. That's right. OK, so, so the next thing that we need to do is pick a delegate user. Now, we don't really have a control that is similar to this reference picker. Um, many instances of ServiceNow have thousands and thousands of users. So instead of just kind of giving a choice list of everybody in the system, Let's narrow it down just a little bit. We're going to use a text prompt. And you can see this is really neat. So I've got this text prompt uh, selected here. There are two issues. Two mandatory fields uh, require information before this works. So I really like the, the real-time uh, kind of validation of this. We've got a name for this. This is just our internal uh, label for this node. And you can see that the variable name that we use in script is automatically generated. Okay, We'll give a prompt or the question to ask the user. And that's all set. We can see that our uh, warnings have gone away there. So if we preview that real quick, it's just asking us for a name, and that's it. All right, 
So now we need to figure out which Chuck we mean. We're going to use a reference choice for this. This will do a data lookup to any table within uh, ServiceNow. And it will give us a uh, record uh, from that table. So we'll call this delegate. And because we've already asked for part of the name, our prompt will just be to confirm your choice. By the way, uh, I'm going to circle back around to the name of this variable in a bit. So just pay attention to that. Okay. Down on the choice list settings, rather, uh, we want to return a record. And we want to return this from the sysuser table. All right. Now here's where um, we get into a little bit of code. Let's just do that in case we've got no records. And look at our choice value expression. And again, in London, this is first release of virtual agent in a production environment. But we've got some really good um, sample uh, data in here. You can see in this function we're passing in the table from our property that we specified here. So we don't need to uh, specify the sys user table. That's already been passed in for us. Um, there's a add encoded query. So if you want, you can just go to the list that you're querying, get the filter set up right, right click on that, and then just paste that filter in here. We want to be a little bit more advanced in that. Um, but this is really good starting code. Uh, if you use this starting code, areas to customize will be your encoded query, your limit to return, and then for the value, make sure that you specify a field that exists on the table that you're, you're looking up. And don't step in the pothole I did and forget to uh, remove these two options. So I had my glide query working, but then I was wiping out the options and returning nothing. So um, save yourself some time. Don't step in that, uh, that same hole. Now I'm going to do a little bit more here. I'm going to use add query instead, look for active users where the name contains. And then here we see something very important. When we're asking for user input, the responses are always VA inputs dot, and then we've got access to all of the, the fields and the va uh, variables that come from users. So that's, that's our prefix for any user input populated variable. So we do that query, and then we're pushing all of those options to the choice list, and we're getting the value of the name field, which in ServiceNow is first.last. We'll save that, and let's preview it. We've got four people whose name contains Joe. Which one do you mean? And that's kind of where we are now. OK, so we've got the delegate, and that returns a user record. Now we need to get the start date and time. So two more user inputs. OK, we'll do call this starts. Start date, we'll leave that as a date and time there. And ends, leave that as a date and time. Then we can see that we can move things around so they make sense in the order. Uh, this is a really, really nice drag and drop interface. So we've got everything on the left hand side to populate the delegate record. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, we're just going to handle approvals and assignments. And you can see in the delegate record that these are Boolean values. So let's ask Boolean questions. Uh, first of all, uh, let's talk about approvals. Handle approvals, it generates the variable name. But let's be a little bit fancy in our question. So rather than just putting in straight text, uh, we can put in a function call here. It's very, very simple here. Um, but before I remove the demo text, you'll notice that we're using get message. Uh, this allows us to handle translations in there, too. So just know that that's supported in here. Um, but we're going to kind of keep it simple. We're going to construct a string. Would you like, again, referencing our uh, delegate variable and dot walking that to the first name, 
to handle approvals on your behalf. So we'll hey, Stacey, I, I do have a quick comment. Can you make the font a little larger? Sure. Uh, that's going to affect designer too well. I know you can zoom in on the flow itself. There, that's great. Oh. Thanks. Oh. All right. I don't need glasses anymore now. Okay. So now let's do our second one, handle assignments. Again, just like before, instead of just hard coding a question in there, we're going to put a function. And again, here we're just returning a string, grabbing that delegate's first name. All right. So we've got everything that we need to create that delegate record. Let's do a quick preview of that. And here, I'm going to say, I want Chuck to cover for me while I'm out. Well, there is one and only Chuck uh, in, in our database, as there should be. So instead of giving me options and having me confirm Chuck Tomasi here, uh, it's smart enough to know that we've only got one. Uh, so it's confirming, do you want Chuck Tomasi as delegate? Remember I told you that that uh, variable name was important uh, to keep in mind, it's used right here. So we confirm, yes, we want Chuck. Chuck's going to cover for me from now until the end of the month. And while we're looking at this, I want you to pay attention to how uh, the date and time fields are handled within the virtual agent uh, web client. One of the nice things about the designer is that it will um, translate how virtual agent in, in the web client handles and renders the date options or different types of fields versus how Slack does it versus how Microsoft Teams does it. So you can design this once and then use it on multiple interfaces without having to understand or consider some of those nuances. So we can flip back over, um, hopefully back to our delegates list, but probably not. Let's open that back up and see. All right. So let's create our delegate record. In the utilities, there is an action. So this is essentially a CRUD action. We can create or update a record. Uh, we'll call it, just to be a little bit apparent, delegate record we created. And we'll create a record, and the type of record is, of course, delegate, sys user delegate. Now this is one of those places where we do have a no code option uh, for defining our field values and creating that record once it connects. All right. So the user, we need to populate. If we use the reference here, we already know the user that we're chatting with. That's automatically populated in here. So we're just going to select the user. We also have our delegate. So if we reference that, you can see that we've got a reference to a delegate record. It starts, ends, And then our options for approvals. And since our variable is a Boolean, we can just assign it straight there. And then we have, of course, assignments. And you know what? We're going to take a little bit of a leap and say that if you're handling assignments, you're also getting the notifications. Save that. And now, once we preview this, we will have a delegate record uh, created. So let's run through this super duper quick. Pick a date. Pick an end time. I'll have Chuck do approvals, but not cover my assignments. Yeah, I didn't agree to that. <laughs> so, so that completes it. But we didn't give the user any kind of acknowledgement in there. But we can go over to our delegates table and see 
Uh, we've got Chuck as the delegate, approvals, but not assignments. Uh, one thing to note is that the default is true for all of these. So, Chuck, you're on my meeting invitation. All right. All right. But it, w <laughs> but it would be nice Yay. to g give the user some kind of acknowledgement. So let's do that in two ways. We'll pull over a bot response for a card where we can uh, display the fields that we set in that new record. So we'll call this the delegate card, and we'll pull fields from the delegate record we created. And again, here we've got a no-code option. We'll say user delegate starts ends approvals and assignments. So that'll pop up a card so the user can see what values were set. Just in the interest of time, I'm not going to uh, test in the interim here, but another thing, not only do we want to show them what was set in here, but it'd be kind of nice to give them a link in case their plans change and they need to update the options. So let's give a bot response with a link to that delegate record. We've got three things that are uh, required, mandatory fields. So we'll give it a link to a record. What do we want at the header of that response? So we'll say, if you need to change the dates or options, use this link to edit the delegate record. Give it a label. And this is at the actual text for the hyperlink that will be displayed. But then, of course, we need to construct the URL. And in here, it takes a little bit of doing. When we look at a delegate record in here, if you look at the address, currentinstance.servicenow.com slash sysuserdelegate.do, sysid equals, and the sysid of that record. So we're going to have to construct that a little bit in code. Here's what I've got. We're pulling. Uh, the property instance name, so that'll be tech now demo, and then just kind of <coughs> splicing that into the URL and pulling from our uh, VA inputs for that create delegate record dot sysid. So when we concatenate that all together, we should have a working sysid. Let's do a test here. Say you're all set. Save and give this a preview. All right, this time I'm going to pick on Craig. Uh oh. Craig, you are my delegate. All right, Stanley bring it. De Stanley decrees it, so. All right. Um, Cancel all the 19th. meetings. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going out for the end of the year. You're covering for me. Uh, yeah, Stacy was one of the 50% uh, that was wiped out by Thanos, so uh, you're going to be delegated <laughs> for a while, Craig. Yeah. And, All right. And boy, do I alert. Want Sorry. To handle my assignments. You're All right. So here's a spoiler that. Spoiler alert on that one. <laughs> I'm going to deny everything. And here, here's our link. So here's our header, our link text. Fingers crossed as we. Click on that delegate record. Loading. Oh, let's see what we did in that link. I bet I know. No, I do not know. Well, you can pull up the delegate table, right. though. Yeah. Let's. Let's re-grab our delegates, VA input dot delegate record we created dot sys underscore ID. I copy paste issues. Save, we'll preview again. If this doesn't work, we'll just punt. It's always fun doing a live demo, right? I know, right? Doing on the fly. <laughs> yeah. 
doing great. The demo gods are smiling. Right. There's our card. Delegate record. Yes, there we go. Yeah. All right. Sweet. So we've got that. That's really great. Let's take a look at this in the service portal. Um, by default, the virtual agent is not on the service portal page, but it's super duper easy uh, to add. So we'll just pull up the service portal, take a quick peek at that, and then we'll add the virtual agent. So this is what our service portal looks like at this current moment. We've got some, <laughs> we'll go to service portal configuration in here. Um, let's see, designer. And we want this on our index page. <coughs> Super easy. I'm just going to find a, a zone for this. Filter my agents for virtual agent service portal widget. Drop it there. And preview. And you can see now we've got this virtual agent icon uh, that shows up at the bottom right. And we can see and all of the topics, and including Stan. all of those ITFM ones. Yep. And we've got our beloved Stan. Okay, so that's how it looks in Service Portal. Again, super easy uh, to add in there. Now, another thing that we can do is integrate with messaging apps. I've done this just because it, it takes a second in here, um, but you'll see in collaboration, virtual agent, messaging apps integration, uh, you pretty much click install, say what workspace you want this on, and uh, when you've got that, now virtual agent will show up as one of your apps in there. Okay, I'm going to interact with it first and then show you the install. So I'm going to say that is really cool, right. by the way. Yeah, and you know what was really really neat. I, I did a Slack integration with ServiceNow a couple of knowledges ago, and you had to set up a webhook and do a lot of uh, kind of coding to get that working. This is like so easy uh, to install. So we've got a response from the virtual agent, and we can see everything that uh, our good buddy Stan can uh, help with, uh, except for create a delegate, which we forgot to go through here. Activate and publish. <laughs> so now, let's just um, we'll search the knowledge base real quick. Email. And we can see that conversation allows us to, uh, to search the knowledge base straight from Slack. So let's say so you may want to make that a little bigger, bigger, by the way. Can you make that a little bigger? I don't know if you can. Yeah. Right. Look, looks like oh. I can. Okay, so now I don't know that we've got nominated delegates showing in here. Might be a little bit of a refresh. Let me um, activate my backup. And activate that one. All right. Search that knowledge base just to clear that out. All right. Third time's a charm. All right, there's our nominated delegate that we just created. And here's where we see a little bit of a difference in um, the UI rendering. So I said I want Joe. You know that we've got four Joes in there. We'll say Joe employees covering for me. The date time picker is a little bit different. Uh, if I want to change the date in Slack, hmm. change that. And then we'll pick December. Okay, approvals, assignments, 
we get our delegate record. I understand that in future releases, this will be uh, rendered a little bit nicer, and we've got our link to that delegate record. So again, we built this conversation once, uh, and we can render it in multiple interfaces. So that's um, quite a time saving in here. Hopefully we're going back uh, to the slides and you can see our demo roadmap. So we looked at uh, the virtual designer interface, creating a topic, publishing it, and exposing it in multiple places. This just gives you a, hopefully a bit of a taste for virtual agent, but there are a lot of additional learning um, materials that you can leverage in addition to trying this out yourself on a developer instance. So docs, we've got a bit.ly link here uh, to bring you directly to the London virtual agent documentation site. Now support is such a great YouTube channel. They've got an eight minute virtual agent overview to give you the highlights. And then finally, for uh, ServiceNow training and certification, in the ServiceNow learning portal, there is a self-paced class on virtual agent. I've included the class ID here to help you with the search, and associated with this is a micro-certification. Micro-certification is essentially an open book, uh, small certification, I believe there are about 20 questions on there, to validate and show the world that you are familiar with a uh, virtual agent and can, can build one of these uh, chatbots. So definitely um, use this just as a ramping up point. Look at those uh, additional learning things. And then also uh, share your tips and tricks. Uh, as I was exploring virtual agent, I was super excited about this. Um, but of course, I stumbled along the way um, trying things out figuring out the best ways to do things, and I'm still learning this as well. I've got a couple of tips and tricks that I've identified here on the slide, but I also posted a, an article yesterday in Community that gives a little bit more uh, detail into what I found about Virtual Agent in prepping for this webinar. For those of you who attended Knowledge18 CreatorCon and did the Virtual Agent Labs, those are really good labs, but just be aware that the way um, that variables are referenced has changed a bit between that very early release and our current uh, London version. Uh, one other thing here to point out is for selecting multiple options. So say you're asking the user for what symptoms uh, are happening for an IT ticket. Uh, you saw that when we were selecting a user, there's no select multiple option right now. So ideally for a delegate, I would want to say, I want Craig to handle approvals, meeting in invites, et cetera. All four of those, just check which ones apply and keep going. It looks like the current um, way to handle this is ask for uh, one, ask uh, if, if they have any other symptoms, if they say yes, more symptoms, kind of loop back and keep asking the same question until the user says that they've selected all the options. And use one of those script variables to kind of uh, compile an array of the responses. So a couple of, couple of good things there. Hopefully you find them valuable. I'd love to have comments on uh, tips and tricks that you found along the way as well. Uh, but virtual agent is such an exciting thing. Um, you know, my mind is just going crazy with all of the options of things that we can have the virtual agent handle so we don't have to on a regular basis. So Chuck, I will turn it back over to you. All um, right. Are there any questions? Up, I was just going to get to that. You have beaten me to the punch. We do have a couple. The um, Several around uh, the decision, like what happens if the person picks their own name? As the delegate, you could obviously have a decision in there that says, does, this, does A match B? If so, right. you put in a message and you loop it around and you say, hey, please try again. That, that was an invalid response. So yes, you can put in decisions to that. Uh, we also had, uh, let's see. Domain uh, separation here. questions as well. Yes, domain separation questions. Do you know about that, Stacey? I, would, I think that the um, all of the branding 
is instance specific. So you can't have separate branding per domain. Um, I would have to double check with product management, uh, but each topic has conditions. So I would assume that because we know who we're chatting with uh, mm -hmm. when a conversation is launched, we should be able to put some conditions in there to check for specific domains or companies to have different conversation flows um, mm -hmm. or different conversations per domain. I would say that probably uh, within conversations, I, I don't know that there's much, you know, we don't, I, I don't believe that there's any support for overrides within uh, different conversation nodes or anything to that fine of detail. Yeah, and if you go look in the document, if you go look in the document, if you look in the documentation on the on our website for for London, uh, it has level one support for domain separation, and there's some caveats in there. So I would suggest you go uh, take a look at that, and they they lay it out pretty well. Did you just yep. give somebody an Hello. RTFM, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Well, I mean, it's, it's too much to to lift here. I mean, just saying, if you go. Uh, take a look at the documentation. There is a lot of stuff in there for, uh, regarding it. And I would say that if you, if your conversation is creating records in the instance and you are running in a domain separated instance, make sure to set the company so it sets the domain or set the domain directly if you don't have a company field on that uh, type of record. So it definitely that, ladies is and gentlemen, to be aware is, of. That's why Stacy's on the show. <laughs> hmm. Very good. Yep. Just earned a gold star. Uh, we also have some around reporting. Do we have any dashboards or reports for VA out of the box? Not that I'm aware of and not that I've seen. That would be good uh, for us to follow up on with that. Okay. All righty. Well, and what about the un unanswered questions? We have a lot of unanswered questions, and I apologize. Uh -huh. We've been trying to keep up as feverishly as possible. If we didn't get to your question, we will have it available on the community in a little bit. The link is right there at the second to bottom. You will find a listing of all of our episodes, Bitly, ServiceNow, TechNow. I'll go through these one at a time. We've obviously got the docs that Craig mentioned. We invite you to practice, get familiar with, test it out, do a proof of value, proof of concept for your employer using your personal developer instance. Go to the developer portal, request one of those with the London release, and Turn on the Glide Virtual Agent plugin. We can give you assistance if you need that. Very easy to do. You might even uh, consider turning on some of the conversations for ITSM, HR, or CSM to look at those examples of what's been built, clone those conversations, and, and start modifying, improvising, doing your own thing. That's the way I got started. I took one of the ITSM conversations and turned it into something that I needed and said, oh, that's, that's close enough, good start, and learned a few things along the way. Great place to do that if you go to developer.servicenow.com. And again, we've been doing this for almost six years, so if there's something in the uh, topic list that you don't see that we haven't covered yet and you really want to know about, throw it out there. We will consider it. Can't say we get to all of your ideas. We only do this once a month, but uh, we are looking for inspiration on topics. We do plan ahead, so forgive us if we don't get to it in December. We already have that one lined up and content being built. Any unanswered questions will be available uh, on the episode 59 virtual agent link on that episode list. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, for attending. It has been a wonderful session. Thank you, Stacy, for the great information, the examples. And uh, Craig, as always, appreciate working with you. And uh, thanks for up and pound through those questions in the background. So thank, thank you. Sir. With that, we are concluded, and we look forward to seeing you next month when we talk about agent intelligence. We're going to be sticking with the uh, the a secret agent theme, I think. <laughs> <laughs> secret agent, agent intelligence, intelligence, virtual agent, and who knows? Maybe we'll get to agent workspace one of these days as well. <laughs> so thank you very much. We look forward to talking to you again in the future. Any parting words, Stacy? We should all start working on our double O agent numbers. <laughs> I'll wear dark glasses and a fedora next time. How's that? There you go. That sounds perfect. And Nobody can see us on these things. We'll just change our, our introduction pictures. <laughs> there we go. I'm wearing a trench coat right now with a hat.
<laughs> Good to know. Thank you, everybody, and have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and take care next time. Bye.